And we're back here, WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. My next guest was a clutch stud for many years for the New England Patriots, winning three Super Bowl championships. He defeated the St. Louis Rams. He defeated the Carolina Panthers, and then he beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Now he is an NFL analyst at the NFL Network. So let's welcome in number 55, the great Willie McGinnis. Willie, it's your buddy Zach Gelb, Chase Sr., and John Henry. How are you? I'm doing great this morning. How you fellas doing? Well, we're doing great. And the last time I saw you was at the JW Marriott Hotel, actually, for the Super Bowl in Indianapolis when the Patriots faced up against the Giants. And I remember there was a lot of Colts fans behind us. And I came up to you and I said, man, I remember your goal line stand going up against the Colts back in Indianapolis. And you said, you got to be careful with saying that with all these Colts fans standing around here. So now we're in the Philadelphia market right now. And when I think Patriots and the Philadelphia Eagles, I remember your performance in that 2004 Super Bowl. Tell me a little bit more about that Super Bowl and what you guys did that day. Well, first of all, defensively, we came out with a totally different uh, defensive scheme that Philadelphia hadn't seen a lot of. Um, they were used to seeing us in a 3-4 front uh, pretty much the whole playoffs in, 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 the, in the majority of the season. And we came out in what we called a rush front was kind of like a 4-3 front. So first play of the game, Donovan McNabb walks up to the uh, – walks up to the line of scrimmage, doesn't recognize what we're in, and he calls a timeout. So that was a pretty good sign that everything's going to be all right uh, going forward that, that day. <laughs> And I also remember a lot of people, they, they don't give enough credit to McNabb in this town. Some people, a lot of people, they love him. They embrace him. They recognize the greatness that he did here, getting to five NFC Conference championship games, one Super Bowl. But some people, they can't get over the fact that he never got over the hump. But in that game, there's some rumors that McNabb puked on the field. Do you remember anything about that? Did Donovan McNabb actually puke during the game? I didn't really see him uh, puke, but, you know, they said he was sick or wasn't feeling well, but... I mean, that's the Super Bowl, regardless of what's going on. If you can be out there, you're going to be out there, um, especially if you're not feeling well. Just If there's something like a cold or stomach virus, whatever the case may be, that's the biggest game of your life, and uh, you just got to fight through it. And I've interviewed a plethora of Patriots players, whether it was uh, Teddy Bruschi, uh, Kevin Falk, Troy Brown, uh, Matt Chatham, Larry Izzo. And I always ask these kinds of questions to these Patriot players. You guys won three Super Bowl championships in four years. You guys were considered a dynasty. You bought into that Patriot way system that Bill Belichick brought out to you guys. What made you guys so big and so clutch in those big moments? I think it comes back to preparation and uh, situational football. I mean, we took a lot of time as a team, and uh, Belichick did a great job of coaching us through a lot of different uh, situational things in practice. We spent a lot of time on that. We prepared really well. Um, we had guys that, you know, they, they wanted to win. They bought into to the team aspect of things, and uh, we challenged each other. You know, forget about who we were playing. I think some of the biggest challenges on that team was we challenged each other to be great and to see how far we could push each other. And uh, our goal was just to win one game a week, and uh, we didn't look past that. So the formula that was in place was pretty effective, and you had guys that bought into it, and you had a lot of talented guys. So when you put everything together, you know, sometimes when, you, when you're doctoring up these formulas and mixtures, it doesn't matter the players you put together. You can put together an all-star cast. It has to be the right guys. they got to have the right mentality, the right attitude, and uh, also the right skill set. Willie Chase Sr. here. Uh, 2005, diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan. You, 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 the Patriots made me cry that night. <laughs> 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 but uh, on a serious note, Going up against that Philadelphia Eagles team, they had Donovan McNabb, who was in his prime, Terrell Owens, Brian Westbrook. What? How difficult was it to prepare for that team? And they had a pretty solid defense as well. Well, it was really, uh, it was really difficult. We knew they had a lot of weapons on offense, and uh, for us to beat them, we was going to have to eliminate it. We couldn't make a lot of mistakes, couldn't give up a lot of big plays. Uh, T.O. was coming off an injury. Uh, he came in and, 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 and went berserk. You know, like he always does. And uh, Westbrook hit us with some big plays. You named some key players, you know, um, that we had to stop. And for us to be successful, those are guys that we targeted going into that game that we would have to at least slow down or, or try and limit. And um, we did 
we did fairly well on a couple of those guys. I mean, we, we slowed down Donovan. He's one of the key guys as well, but uh, T.O. had a big day, and Westbrook hurt us on some big plays as well. Holding that team to 21 points is a pretty nice accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. I mean, any time uh, we didn't want to give up that much, but we did give up 21 points, but we had confidence in our offense that they could score 21. And the key to the game is always to, to give up, you know, as less points as you can to give your offense you know, your offense, multiple opportunities for turning the ball over. I think that also played a big uh, key in that we, 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 we turned the ball over. We, we you know, we, uh, we forced Philadelphia to turn the ball over, which gave us multiple opportunities. And uh, I think it was something like four or five turnovers in that game, which uh, directly affected, you know, us as far as scoring, field position, and uh, keeping them out of the end zone. Willie McGinnis joins us on the hotline. Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP, number 55 NFL Network analyst right now joins us. And, Willie, you see this Eagles team now. They've struggled over the last two years. They swung and missed on free agency when they brought in the whole dream team stuff and all that nonsense. Andy Reid's out of a job. Chip Kelly now comes in, and he's the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And this offseason, they brought in a few good chemistry guys, and they also made one big splash with the former Texans linebacker and Connor Barwin. Just recap what you think the Eagles have done so far and free agency? Well, I think they're rebuilding. I think they're uh, assessing the talent that they have. They have a new coach. They're going to have a new system. Uh, the scheme is going to change on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. So they got to go in and they got to bring in the players that fit that system. You know, they got to they got to bring in players that fit the personality of the head coach and what he's trying to accomplish. And um, I know the transition um, – we saw in Oregon uh, was very effective, and I think it's going to take a little bit of time in in Philadelphia. But uh, he's a good coach. Um, he understands football, but you know it's another level from college to the NFL. He doesn't have a lot of experience uh, in the NFL, so he has other coaches around him, uh, assistant coaches that have a lot of experience that will aid. And, uh, and teaching him the, the, the operational part of the football thing. And I, th- I think they're in free agency, they're doing that. They're going after players, like I said, that uh, has got, is going to be a part of that change. And they sit here at number four in the draft, and we've heard rumors that maybe they look offensive linemen, defensive linemen. There is a chance that the quarterback, Geno Smith, is there. You need a quarterback to win in this league. You had Tom Brady. The Steelers have Big Ben. The Packers have Aaron Rodgers. If they do make Geno uh, Smith the selection at number four, what do you think he could bring to this Eagles team? Well, it's going to bring a package that uh, we, we're starting to see now uh, that's going on in the league, that a mobile quarterback who can run uh, a variety of different packages, who control the ball really well downfield, that uh, defense is going to have a nightmare trying to game plan for. Um, you know, they have Michael Vick. They have Foles on the, schedule, uh, on the, on the roster as well and Dixon. So uh, it's not like he's going to have to be forced to play right away. They have some experience there at the quarterback position, but he's, uh, he, he's a good – really good uh, college football player, and if he can learn the system and what Chip Kelly is going to probably try to uh, transition into offensively, um, they could be a dangerous offense. It's just going to take some time. It's going to take the right players. Um, and it's a little bit different in college. So, like I said, you got to have the right players that's going to play in that system. That system and the transition at the quarterback position with the dual threat guys has really caught a lot of people by surprise. Last year was obviously successful with RG3 and Russell Wilson and so forth. But do you think that that type of system can last long in the NFL and translate to Super Bowl victories? Well, we saw teams in the playoffs. I mean, we saw Seattle run a form of it. We saw Washington run a form of it. And we saw a team playing in the Super Bowl run a form of it in San Francisco. Um, what you have to understand is it's not a total system. It's still a traditional offense. But they just add those pistol formations or different formations, which we call packages, within the offense. So, I mean, you do have a regular offense, and then you have packages. If you have a talented quarterback who's athletic, who can do different things, you have a good running game, a good offensive line that can – zone block that's really good at uh, doing the things that offense
offense requires, then you can you, you can implement this in your offense. A lot of teams just don't have everything to, to, to incorporate this in their offense. So there's certain quarterbacks that can carry this out. I think Geno Smith is one of those guys. But uh, it's a package. I mean, back in the day before we made a big fuss of all about, about this, you had Cordell Stewart and Slash in Pittsburgh, you know, right. O'Donnell. They would bring him in and run all these all these exotic packages, and it was a nightmare for us to have to game plan and take out time in practice and take out extra time uh, in the film room to prepare for this. And some games they wouldn't do a lot of it, but you still had to take away from your preparation to get ready for it. Hey Willie, uh, John here. Do you think uh, what do you think of Nick Foles? Do you think he can turn out to be a premier quarterback in the league, or do you think that the guy's just not going to be not going to pan out? What do you think of him? Well, um, you know, it's too early to tell. You got to give guys like that a chance to play. He, he he played in some games and he showed some signs that he can uh, he can play in this league. Uh, he does have a, a a really good skill set, else he wouldn't be here. But you know, with anything else, it takes experience. It takes you can't go off the potential of what a guy might do. We saw that uh, from the quarterback that Philly gave up a couple of years ago in Kevin Cobb. You know, here's a guy who got a big contract based on uh, potential, and he never really panned out. And uh, we saw him get released after getting a big contract. He didn't have a lot of experience. So I think that these guys got to get their feet wet. They got to get coached. You know, that's a really tough position, really important position on the field. So uh, you got to develop quarterbacks. Uh, you have to teach them uh, to different – it's a different level on the NFL, and uh, they got to have experience. they actually got to get in there and play. Taking notes, um, being a classroom warrior is not going to just do it. you got to get out there and actually play the game, feel the game, and understand it uh, from both sides of the ball, from the classroom and from being on the field. Willie, we know we're pressed, you're pressed for time, so one more question right before we let you run. We can't talk uh, football with you without talking about the Patriots with the whole Wes Welker contract. You had negotiations with the Patriots in the past. Just give me your whole thoughts about what happened with Wes Welker leaving the Patriots and now Danny Amendola coming in. Well, I mean, a year ago, um, you know, I kind of said, not to my own home, but I kind of said it would kind of end up this way, that he should try to probably get the most he can get, and then if he doesn't get the contract, that he wants, don't take it personal. You know, that's just how they do business with certain players at a certain part of their career at a certain age. And, you know, Wes has been one of the most productive receivers in the game, or he has been, uh, the past six years. And uh, a lot has to do with Tom Brady and that offense and that scheme, but a lot has to do with him uh, being productive as well. But you have to understand in negotiations and um, the Patriots do a pretty good job at assessing your uh, your market value, what you're worth, and they, they consider your age and your production and what you're going to and what you may go through. And, uh, I mean, I think they offered him a, a, a pretty fair deal. It, it, it was worth more than what he signed for in Denver. I think that was a really good deal. I didn't think there was a lot of teams out there that was going to pay him, you know, at 32 uh, years of age, $10 million a year. Uh which he uh, wanted, I think, a year ago. But I think the Patriots got it pretty close with the two-year 16 or two-year 20. It was the first initial, then two-year 16, which they offered him. I think they got pretty close to what he, what he was worth and, and what the market called for. Um, it's hard to say what a guy is actually worth when he goes out and all he does is produce and make big plays. Uh, he's a good player for your team. He's tough. But... I mean, we've seen that not just with the Patriots, but with a lot of teams. We've seen it with Baltimore. You know, they just won a Super Bowl, and they lost almost six players on that defense uh, because of free agency, some of their best players. So that's the part of the business that happens, but you just got to make sure that the communication is there, everybody's on the same page, and a lot of times when that communication breaks down, uh, those deals break down as well. As well. Willie, this was a whole lot of fun today. It was a pleasure to watch you play over the course of your years, making all those trips up to Foxborough. We appreciate the time. Thanks so much, and let's get you on again real soon. Thanks for having me, guys. Yep, thanks, Willie. Willie McGinnis right there, former New England Patriot, three-time Super Bowl champion. We'll take a quick break, and when we get back, we will continue to break down this bracket.